What's good, y'all? Dr. Trey Hanna. Now it's Metabolic Monday, so you already know I gotta teach you something new, okay? So we grew up in a generation where we've seen a lot of crazy headlines, right? And a lot of lay media, what they do is they like to go ahead and tweak the headline just so it can literally stand out a little bit more, which means what? It catches and grabs your attention, right? So I just seen a uh, headline recently that we probably heard multiple times that red meat causes cancer. Right. So today, what we're going to talk about is does red meat really cause cancer and what you need to look at or pay attention to. That way you're basically preventing your chances of even receiving cancer in the first place. And why are they able to literally spread this sort of headline or information or misinformation? OK, so first things first, red meat causes cancer. Now, why are they even saying this from the molecular perspective or physiological perspective? It's because of how the human body produces something called IGF-1, which is insulin-like growth factor one, okay? So what insulin growth factor does, or just like insulin, you probably heard of insulin, especially if you've been following me for X amount of time, insulin basically promotes anabolism, which means what? The growth of things. So the growth of new tissue, the growth of muscle, the growth of cells, the growth of cancer, okay? All of these things stem from insulin, okay? Insulin like growth factor one is actually derived from where? The brain, okay? So your brain literally released something called GHRH, which is growth hormone releasing hormone, and it sends it to the pituitary gland, okay? And it basically makes your liver start producing these metabolites, such as IGF-1, okay? Long story short, when this is in your system, your body's gonna start growing things. Okay, so ironically, when things are growing, that means everything is going to grow. Your body cannot say, okay, I want you to grow. I want this cell to grow and you, I don't want you to grow. No, once your body gets the signal to grow, it's going to do that, right? Just like when your body's getting the signal to fast, right? Because we don't have enough energy available or enough resources because this human is not providing it exogenously from food, then we got to go ahead and start breaking things down. That is the form of light polishes. Right, just like the novel lipogenesis is the growth of new fat, lipolysis is we're breaking it down. Glycolysis is you're breaking down glucose, and gluconeogenesis is we're creating new glucose. Simple, okay? So always remember, neogenesis or the novel lipogenesis is the creation of something new. Lipolysis is to break things down, right? So insulin like growth factor one, we're trying to build things up. Why? Because nine times out of 10, when you are producing insulin, you're doing some form of resistance training, right? Or you're eating a lot of protein or carbs, right? So if you're actually eating these things that's gonna promote insulin, you're giving your body to grow or the signal to grow, simple. Protein is gonna give that insulin or uh, give that insulin-like response and carbs are gonna give the exact same response to grow, okay? So why are they straight targeting um, protein. The reason being is because they are using something called descriptive statistics or correlational studies. What does that mean? Basically, they're actually looking at somebody, right? Either via survey or observational. These are why it's called correlational studies, which are the weakest um, studies known to man, first and foremost, okay? You want more RCTs, which is randomized control tiles, right? But um, the one that's easier to get done and the cheapest form of studies actually come from correlational studies or epidemiological studies, okay? And these are studies where I'm basically watching somebody do something and I'm like, okay, let me see if I can create any correlations or, or make any inferences due to what I see, okay? So for instance, let's say majority of the time when you think of somebody who's even eating red meat, right? What's gonna be their side? You're probably thinking somebody who's eating red meat, burger, right? With fries right maybe with a sprite right thinking that they're probably a little bit overweight right probably not as active etc right all these things play a part but because i see somebody even though they're eating red meat but they're having it with bread and they're having that with them salty ass fries and they're having it with a sprite and then they might have a milkshake and they're not working out i can say that oh if this dude or this individual receives cancer Red meat causes cancer. Does that make any sense to you? No. But because a lot of people don't read anything else but the headline and they're not actually reading the actual study, you might realize that they can't really state that it's really the red meat. It's the lifestyle, 
right? It's kind of some sort of confirmation bias. But because you didn't read all that, you're just saying, oh, red meat causes cancer. Now you're telling all your friends, red meat causes cancer. Just like I could tell you a headline that I've seen today from Healthline Foods, right? That there's five vegetables that causes hypothyroidism. What does that mean for you? If you have hypothyroidism, that means your metabolism is gonna slow down, right? Because the thyroid is basically the thermostat of the body. We could turn things up and we can slow things down. So you don't want a slow thyroid, right? Because that means you're gonna start gaining weight very fast, simple. So, but vegetables we were taught are healthy, right? And ironically, in this actual um, headline, they said cruciferous vegetables causes hypothyroidism. You know why they say that? It's because you was taught all your life, oh, wait, I thought vegetables are healthy and I thought leafy green vegetables are healthy, right? And even though these leafy greens got some compounds in it called um, isothiocyanates, which is kind of goitrogens, which basically binds and chelates some sort of iodine, which your thyroid needs, oh, that means I can't eat broccoli anymore or I can't eat kale anymore or I can't eat spinach anymore. Does that make any sense? No, it's all about how much you're having at that time right so for instance we all heard that smoking causes cancer the reason why smoking causes cancer is because it produces more oxidative stress in your body and reactive oxygen species in your body this is the total opposite of antioxidants so because you're basically breaking down and you're killing your cells right then of course more mutations might arise that makes sense right but smoking causes um your risk of you having cancer about two times right let's say two times now they're saying red meat causes it four times which means what oh if you're having red meat you're four times or more likely to have cancer than smoking does that make any logical sense no simple right but ironically you know what also causes igf1 to spike higher than smoking higher than red meat exercise exercise causes igf1 to go up 20 folds which means what five times higher than red meat. But I thought working out was healthy. You see what I'm saying? So one thing you have to understand is you always want to read all the studies. See who is back in these studies, because nine times out of 10, you might realize that, oh, the person that's saying that this thing is unhealthy is the person's um, adversary. So I'm gonna, pro of course, promote, especially because I got the back end money to do it, I'm gonna go ahead and promote that my competitor is trash. Believe it or not, that's happening, right? Like a lot of people don't know, the Food and Drug Administration is backed by a lot of pharmaceutical com um, companies. That seems like a conflict of interest to me, but a lot of people don't know that, <laughs> you know? So, long story short, do red meat causes cancer? No, directionally, no, that's called causative inference, okay? Correlation doesn't always mean causation, okay? It's about what you're also having with the red meat. That's really going to cause it, okay? But if that's the case, anything could cause cancer. You being outside for too long, you know you can get some melanoma, right? In this case, if working out makes you cause cancer, then that means um, where's all the people that you see that's bodybuilders, which means what? They live in the gym, receiving some sort of sarcoma, which is what? Um, that is the cancer of connected tissues, muscle, bone, etc. right? These things are not really happening. You don't see a lot of cases of this. It's because what they do is they're basing it off people who's doing something to the extreme. A lot, a lot of people don't live in extremes, right? The average person is gonna eat red meat here and there, but they're not eating six ribeyes every single day. Ironically, that's how much you need for you to have too much meat. Too much protein is you eating six ribeyes a day and you're never doing it. You, that didn't even came across your head, right? But you know what can also cause uh, cancer a lot faster? A lot of sugar. And the average American eats around 150 pounds of sugar a year. So which one do you think you can basically stop yourself from doing? Eating six ribeyes, which you never do, or eating 150 grams of sugar or 150 pounds of sugar every single year? That's the one you can stop. And ironically, um, people who are more susceptible to have cancer happen to be people who are obese who's having weight problems, right? Who is glucose intolerant, who has metabolic syndrome, which means what? Your body's not really able to um, really metabolize all the glucose you're giving it, right? They have high waist to hip circumference ratios, right? They are people who are having cardiovascular disease. They're very sedentary, not getting a lot of sleep, etc. All these things are preventable. All these things are lifestyle diseases, okay? So if you fix one issue, nine times out of 10, you fix all the issues. 
all right? So majority of diseases and chronic diseases can be prevented, it's just based off your lifestyle. And if you're actually in a better situation when it comes into your metabolic health and it comes to your overall health, then you don't have to worry about majority of these things. A lot of people think cancer is a genetic disease. No, it's really lifestyle disease, okay? So don't smoke, make sure you work out if possible, okay? Yes, working out is healthy, even though that's what the statistics say. It can produce IGF-1 a little bit more, right? You dealing with something acutely is totally different from you dealing with something chronically. Okay, so chronic inflammation is totally different from acute inflammation. Just keep that in mind, all right? Last but not least, once again, sleep, work out, eat right, okay? And make sure you're not having a burger with the milkshake, with the fries, and you having Cold Stone later. It's that simple, okay? Make sure you start eating real foods, not highly processed foods, and you're gonna lower your risk for cancer. And just like cruciferous vegetables is not gonna make you cause hypothyroidism, unless you juice in three to four times a day like a crazy person, okay? And you just have nothing but spinach and kale and broccoli in it, okay? So hopefully y'all learned something today and that's your reset tip today. It's gonna help you stay snatched all the time during the summertime. Don't listen to these crazy headlines, okay? They're headlines for a reason. We're trying to grab your attention. Make sure you actually read the data so you're not afraid of everything because if that's the case, you're gonna be afraid to drink water very soon, okay? Talk to you soon.